the gratuitous display of the old flag constitute prohibited hate speech, unfair discrimination, and harassment. That the display of the impugned flag must be confined to genuine artistic, academic, or journalistic expression in the public interest. I'm joined now by Herman Pretorius. He's from the South African Institute for Race Relations. Well, I think it sets a dangerous precedent. And uh, I think, let me make clear at the start, that even in the uh, legal arguments, Afri Forum by no means talked up the old South African flag. And I, I, I don't know a single South African who I think would do that. But from a legal perspective, no, personally, I, I honestly don't. Um, and I think this whole uh, thing was triggered by uh, an inaccurate facts. The, the, the reality is that this goes back to the Black Monday protests where journal a specific journalist shared a picture of the protest taking place and the old flag being displayed. And uh, it later transpired that that picture wasn't even taken that day at that protest. So the whole thing was triggered by factual inaccuracy. And from factual inaccuracy, we've gone to some very dangerous legal ground. Yes, and I think by banning the flag, you're doing them a favor. We cannot. Also because if a society can be open about symbols, then it can argue the cases behind those symbols and defeat them through reasoned debate, as South Africans have done for a century, bringing about social change and much needed democratic um, alignment, uh, uh, even though it took an incredibly long time. But by banning symbols, you are giving these, uh, these symbols and people who espouse hateful rhetoric and ideology behind that the necessary cover so that their symbols do not form part of the public debate. I am all for getting rid of the old flag. I am no proponent of it. But I think you argue cases better when the other side can actually show up and present their argument and you can win that argument. Um, the premise being that I would somehow have insight into the minds of these people who would support that flag, I don't yeah, grant. It, it, it also represents a time when liberation movements were banned, where liberation symbols were banned. It's very clear that this um, nationalist impulse survived the merger of the ANC and the National Party in 2005. The National Party were experts at banning things, it didn't work well for them in the end, now did it? Oh yes, but come on, let's be reasonable. If we're going to speak, I'm, I'm moving to your terminology. <laughs> I admit the, 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 the parameters of this discussion is reasonableness, and I think I've admitted that from the start. But if we look at this case from a legal perspective, we can leave the politics out of it. Um, I'm not someone who supports that politics, so I don't think I'm the right person to speak to that. But from a legal perspective, this is a very unsound judgment. If you look at section 16 of the Constitution, especially 16.2c, then you get uh, uh, the, the, the limitations on freedom of speech being the adv advocacy of hatred based on certain categories of race, etc. And then crucially in that subsection, let me read it exactly for you, just make sure I get it right, and that, uh, so let me read the whole section. Um, the right in subsection one does not extend to advocacy of hatred that is based on race, ethnicity, gender, or religion, and that constitutes incitement to cause harm. Ironically, the Equality Court today um, interpreted section 10 of, the, of Pepuda to be more restrictive on the right to freedom of expression, thereby fundamentally legally limiting a right through primary legislative interpretation that is given in a broader context by the Bill of Rights. So from a legal perspective, I think this is an unsound judgment. And from a historical perspective, I think banning has never worked. The swastika was banned in Germany. And as we can see today, racism is rearing its ugly head again. I'm not sure I follow your reasoning at the end there, if there was any. That's absolutely. In this interview, I've likened this flag to the swastika. I don't think anyone can accuse me or my institute of considering this a light matter. We just don't think that this is the right way of going about it. There's the rule of law. There is constitutional interpretation. There is the judicial process. These things did not shine today. We are not advocating for the waving of this flag, and we must make this very clear. There's a difference to, be, uh, it to being in favor of a right and in favor of a practice. We are in favor of a right of freedom of expression. 
We are not necessarily in favor of every possible manifestation of that right in practice. Africa has a century of experience of where governments have tried to manage its citizens oppressively by regulating speech, regulating who they can love, regulating where they can stay. This is an ambitious project that the National Party launched and that South Africa seemingly hasn't yet distanced itself from. So, this so do you might I just finish this point because I do think it's crucial. South Africans are a surprisingly rational people if we get out of the Twitter sphere and if we look past social media. But unfortunately, we can't get out of the yes, Twitter sphere. Can, That's where I, we are. Let me just finish the point. The fact of the matter is every societal ill does not require government intervention. That is not how our constitution is structured. From a legal perspective, there are social sanctions that we, as, as speaking as an Afrikaner, we have widely accepted the new dispensation. Well, thank you for doing so. And I'm proud of that. I have no allegiance to this flag. But the fact of the matter is that we have to acknowledge that if we're going to have freedom of expression, we have to say that there are going to be expressions we find offensive, we find unsociable, we find racist. But that does not mean those things have to be illegal. That is how the National Party achieved the, the absolute freedom to oppress by removing the freedom of people to really express themselves. And the ANC should know this. I'm not in involving them the in ANC this court. The ANC didn't bring down yes, this no, that's, judgment. That, that, that's came not from what I'm the saying. Court. That's not what I'm saying. But the ANC should know this. Our current government should know this. And they should take heed that the powers currently being given to the government to legislate opinions out of popularity and out of existence is exactly what they fought against. The encroachment of freedom of speech, the putting, and, and let, me put, let me define that quite clearly. This piece of legislation, PEPIDA, was adopted by 50% plus one of parliamentarians. That means this judgment has just given 50% plus one of parliamentarians in this country the right to regulate your and my freedom of expression. I'm joined now by Herman Pretorius. He's from the South African Institute for Race Relations. The Equality Court has ruled the old South African flag constitutes hate speech. It has placed restrictions on the use of the flag. The legal battle was sparked by a 2017 protest against farm murders. Well, uh, you might believe that this specific case was triggered by that specific event, which you are now questioning the facts around I it. I think you even acknowledged but it in your the, introduction. Uh, the issue at fault here is that this is a flag that represents a very, very dark part of South Africa's history. And as much as you might not know somebody who um, puts this flag on a pedestal or believe that it stands for the good old days, as it were, there are people who live in this country who do wave that flag in memory of uh, the bygone days of the good old days of apartheid. Surely you will admit that. Now, we're sitting around a table and we, can, uh, we are able to have a, a very civil conversation mm -hmm. and we can debate it almost along intellectual or academic lines but you and I both know that uh, especially the type of people that would put this flag on a pedestal would not want to sit around the table especially with people of other colors and would have to want to have a reasonable debate they hang on to that flag because it represents a time where white people uh, were deemed to be uh, better than and superior to black people. Surely you would then admit that a judgment like this that says the gratuitous use of this flag uh, is unacceptable at least takes care of the fact that it won't be used as a, a weapon of sorts to inflict hurt and open up old wounds. From a sensible but, point of view, we yes, need to yes, know yes. that there are those people out there Absolutely. who do that. Absolutely. We see it on social media. Yes. There are dark corners on the oh, internet yes. where yes. these people get together and use hateful terms as if it was 1970s South Africa. And that flag yes. represents all of that. But and now the word banning was not used in this judgment from what I've seen. Now, now you're using the term reasonable. Yes, like, this and, is and no if you use this as an example, it is raising its ugly head mm. and there are elements across the world that are bringing back the swastika yes. as a symbol of that hatred yes. and that racism. Yes, a so, symbol that so is banned. Indeed. Banning um, doesn't work. So 
but I bring it back again that this judgment doesn't use the term ban. There are people that are saying that it should be banned outright, mm. but this judgment doesn't do that. I and mean, if, if I go to a certain part of the judgment as well, where the judge says the use of a symbol communicates from mind to mind, they yes. communicate just as words do. Mm. Words in section 10.1 uh, must not be read literally, but must be interpreted to, to be wide enough to include yes. expressions of ideas, such as the waving of the flag. And in as much as we expect uh, our courts to follow the letter of the law, they also cannot be tone deaf Absolutely. to the country that those, those laws represent. And if you represent an institution that calls itself uh, the Institute of Race Relations, uh, we, we cannot just uh, get stuck on the definition of a word like ban or a reasonable. Uh, if we're talking about relations between people mm. of different colors, you have to admit that that flag stands for something that can only be divisive between those races that you are trying to get to relate to each other. The fact is... I think that's a little bit unfortunate. Um, but, but let, let uh, me answer the question. Perhaps go ahead and try and explain let, to let, that because you do, the you do represent the, the Institute of Race yes, Relations. Yes, proudly. Do, do you, would you at least then admit that this flag represents the kinds of symbols and words and rhetoric that comes between those specific races that make their home in South Africa, Absolutely. which has a history that is extremely de divisive and is still inflicts quite a bit of hurt, especially with symbols such as that. But then why leave the door open for the expression of that kind of hate if it's only going to cause so? Hurt? So you feel like, and in, in closing, sorry, we do have to go. We could speak for a mm. while about this, and I'm sure our viewers will be for some time as well. Um, it, if, if you argue that there's no point in banning it because these kinds of symbols do not disappear, yeah. what do we have to gain by not banning it? Well, I suppose as a black South African, perhaps I would have to see it differently because when you look at a, a symbol which has represented pain and suffering for generations that have gone before people like, like the me, communist flag. It's, it's very... No, I'm speaking about this flag. Oh, but why not um, the communist flag? Uh, can I speak? Because I've allowed you to speak for some time now, Herman. Um, Freedom you, of There speech. needs to be an understanding that what this represents as a symbol in as much as hate speech is constituted and the definition includes words the symbols need to be included as well and we've got a government and a justice system that cannot be tone deaf to Absolutely. what that represents thank you so Absolutely. much for coming in thank you. with the South African Institute of Race Relations Herman Pretorius is a analyst thank you so